World War I saw the German, Austrian, Ottoman, and Russian empires collapse. Monarchies were replaced with democracies. Many new nations were formed as the groundwork for World War II was sadly laid. The chief commander of the Allied forces, Marshal Ferdinand Foch of France, put it best. This is not peace, it is an armistice for 20 years. Arguably, the most significant outcome of World War I was the weakening of European empires, both politically and economically. The war exacted a heavy toll, paving the way for the rise of independence movements across the globe. Colonial troops were significant to the conflict, however, their sacrifice was not met in equitable treatment after the war's conclusion. The mistreatment of colonial troops became a catalyst for major independence movements and colonies, sparking a wave of demands for self-determination and autonomy. Now, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Are you ready to set sail on an epic maritime adventure? We'll look no further than World of Warships, the ultimate free-to-play naval combat game that's making waves across PC and consoles. World of Warships offers an immersive gaming experience through regular updates, ensuring that you'll never run out of new challenges on the high seas. With its stunning graphics and detailed ship models, you'll feel like you're at the helm of some of history's most iconic vessels. Choose from a variety of ship classes, each with its unique playstyle, strategy, and firepower. Whether you prefer the swift and nimble destroyers, the formidable battleships, or the strategic cruisers, there's a ship for every captain. Explore over 40 different maps, each offering a dynamic and strategic environment for intense battles. Plan your tactics and outsmart your opponents, and lead your ship to victory on the vast and treacherous seas. And here's the best part. World of Warships caters to a global audience with support for English, French, German, Czech, and Japanese languages, so you can connect with captains from around the world and coordinate your attacks and experience the thrill of massive multiplayer battles. Download World of Warships using the first link in the description, and use the promo code HPPYNWYR2024 to get a huge holiday starter pack. Victory awaits you on the high seas. Are you ready to command your fleet? Play World of Warships now, available for free on PC and consoles. The original goal for the Germans was to quickly knock out France and then Russia following the Schlieffen Plan. The prolonged duration of World War I can be attributed in part to Austria-Hungary. Political tensions between Vienna and Budapest exacerbated the situation, as the two capitals harbored mistrust and divergent visions for the empire's administration. This was most apparent in the colonial efforts where Austria sought African colonies, while Hungary vehemently opposed such ambitions and blocked them. The empire's military structure included three separate armies. The Common Army, the Imperial Royal Landwehr, and the Royal Hungarian Honved. Funding discrepancies resulted in inadequately equipping the forces, as Austria and Hungary both only wanted to fund their national armies rather than the common imperial one. The common army struggled with poor equipment and food shortages, exacerbated by Austria-Hungary's lack of significant military engagement in the preceding 50 years. The empire's occupation of Bosnia and Herzegovina proved a blunder, requiring 200,000 men to take the region from the crumbling Ottomans. Regiments organized along linguistic lines, but the empire was comprised of Germans, Hungarians, Poles, Ukrainians, Romanians, Czechs, Slovaks, Italians, Slovenes, Croats, and Serbians. The language barrier necessitated the creation of Army Slavic, an 80-word language based on Czech that was used for the Slavic troops of the empire. This linguistic complexity, combined with the logistical challenges posed by the poor rail network, rendered transportation across the empire cumbersome. Supply issues, especially prevalent on the Eastern Front, further impeded imperial ability to conduct a swift and decisive military campaign, forcing the Germans to bring more troops east. If you want the maps, images, and sources, join my Patreon or become a channel member. Don't forget to like the video, with 5,000 likes for World War II set in this world. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay updated with our historical adventures. Now, back to the video. Here, two things changed. Firstly, the occupation of Bosnia highlighted the urgent need for the empire to modernize its military capabilities. Recognizing the necessity of keeping pace with other European powers, the empire slowly overhauled its military. Simultaneously, in 1903, the early planning of the Berlin-Baghdad Railway presented a unique opportunity. The rail network aimed to connect Germany to the Ottoman Empire, with routes passing through Austria-Hungary. The Germans and Austrians built up significant railways through the empire. Recognizing the logistical challenges that had stalled the main construction, both Austria and Germany sought to create an alternate subroutes through various regions of the Austrian Empire. As a result, the empire experienced a significant boost in logistical capabilities for transportation. The modernized railways allowed for the more efficient movements of goods, transforming the empire's economic landscape. Although still not on par with the military prowess of Germany, France, or the UK, 
These changes in military and economic modernization marked a crucial step towards revitalizing the Austro-Hungarian Empire and positioning it as a far more competitive player on the European and global stage. Now at the outbreak of World War I, the Austro-Hungarian military faced Russian forces and managed to fend them off. The Germans therefore directed fewer troops eastward, having confidence in the capabilities of the Austrian military. This decision left more forces available for the Western Front, allowing them to better execute the Schlieffen Plan. The plan involved a swift march through Belgium into France with the aim of quickly neutralizing the French. The Western Front witnessed a crucial turning point in history at the Battle of the Marne. British and French forces attempted to flank the Germans. However, despite initial success, both armies suffered significant losses during the German counter-assault. The Germans emerged victorious in the Battle of the Marne, creating a gap in the line that enabled them to reach Paris. Exploiting the chaos as the Entente forces attempted to reorganize, the Germans launched counterattacks across the front, ultimately seizing Paris by late September. Following the fall of Paris, the fighting persisted. The Germans, leveraging their numerical advantage with over one million men, launched new offenses to Orléans and Dijon. German occupation of significant French manufacturing and supply bases crippled the Entente. The British were pushed across the channel and morale among the Entente plummeted as France looked destined to collapse. By New Year's Day 1915, Entente generals deemed the conflict unwinnable, as the French and British populace turned against the war due to horrendous losses, prompting official ceasefire negotiations by the French. A formal truce was declared by mid-January, leading to full negotiations in Frankfurt, mirroring the Franco-Prussian War. The quick nature of the war meant no Zimmerman telegram, therefore the United States would never enter. Without entering World War I or any of the subsequent conflicts, the U.S. maintained a policy of non-intervention, focusing on domestic affairs and upholding the Monroe Doctrine. The Treaty of Frankfurt, echoing the September program, the memorandum authorized by Chancellor Theobald von Bethmann Holweg, the treaty saw the French humiliated by the Germans for the second time in 50 years. France was forced to join Mittel Europa, a German-dominated pan-European economic pact. Germany annexed Luxembourg into their empire. Antwerp and eastern Belgian lands was annexed, while Belgium was puppeted, coupled with German control over military and naval installations within Belgium. France lost the Brie region with its ore mines, and a coastal strip from Dunkirk to Boulogne-sur-Mer went to Germany. War reparations amounted to 10 billion German marks, and all French colonies, while de facto given to Germany, remained outside of German control due to the intervention of the Royal Navy, who planned to continue the war. On the eastern front of World War I, Serbia fell in mid-February 1915. The Russians were furious over France's negotiations, as the German and Austro-Hungarian forces overwhelmed them. The push extended into southern Lithuania, western Poland, and the Baltic states by early February. Romania, ruled by King Ferdinand I and a member of the House of Hohenzollern and Sigmaringen, joined the Central Powers, similarly to how Italy did with the Entente in real life. Here, Lenin was not sent to Russia. As a result, there was no communist revolution, only minor protests featuring reformists and some activists. The Eastern Front's culmination saw a Brest-Litovsk-esque treaty in the Treaty of Warsaw, which was signed in 1915, also aligning with the September program. The historic enmity between Austria and Prussia became evident when it came to Poland. The Austrians actively supported the idea known as the Austro-Polish Solution, creating a Polish kingdom with equal standing to Austria and Hungary within the empire. However, the German high command, led by Ludendorff, had different plans. They sought to annex 19,000 square miles of the former Congress Poland, evicting millions of Poles and Jews to make room for German colonists in the so-called Polish border strip. Despite Austrian aims, Poland became a German puppet. This caused Austria to never join Middle Europa, souring relations with the Germans. I can explore an Austrian victory in World War I, leading to their re-emergence as a global superpower, so if you'd like to see this, please leave a comment about it. The conquest for control over Poland involved contenders from various royal houses, including Saxony with Frederick Augustus III, Württemberg with Duke Albrecht, and Bavaria with Prince Leopold. Wilhelm and Prussia were cautious about Bavaria becoming too influential, so Frederick Augustus III of Saxony, a Roman Catholic, was eventually crowned the Polish king, reforming the personal union between Poland and Saxony. In the territorial reshuffling, Germany annexed the Polish strip, Lithuania, Ukraine, Belarus, the United Baltic Duchy, Tartar Crimea, and Georgia were formed as German puppets, 
while Finland gained complete autonomy and independence from both Russia and Germany. Romania also secured Bessarabia for their contribution to the war. Despite the significant territorial changes, the Germans aimed for a quick war to prevent political instability in Russia, ensuring the Tsar still remained in power, however, he was now under German influence. The Ottomans made territorial gains by puppeting Armenia. Austria fully integrated Bosnia, solidifying its control over the region. Meanwhile, Serbia was carved up between Bulgaria and Greece, leaving a rump state puppeted by Austria. Montenegro also became an Austrian puppet, while the empire annexed their entire coastline. The Treaty of Frankfurt became the catalyst for another French civil war, with factions vying for control including imperialists, monarchists, syndicalists, and republicans, mirroring the dynamic seen during the Russian Civil War. Ultimately, the syndicalists emerged victorious, but their grip on power faced resistance from Germany and the UK, who jointly invaded France to prevent the spread of the ideology that could easily destroy both of their vast empires. The intervention resembled historical coalitions that the UK and Prussia had joined in when defeating Napoleon a hundred years earlier. Amid the chaos, Britain seized French colonies, triggering revolts in Africa and Indochina. Italy joined the Germans and invaded France, seizing Savoy, Tunisia, and Corsica. The brief syndicalist government was overthrown by 1917 as the French were further humiliated. The ensuing Treaty of Versailles saw French colonies divided between Britain, Italy, and Germany, while Algeria remained part of France. Italy annexed Savoy and Corsica, while a condominium with the UK was established in Tunisia. Britain recognized the European expansions of Germany from the Treaty of Frankfurt, and they cemented their Middle Eastern hold as they annexed Persia. The Belgian Congo was split among the British, Germans, and Portuguese, as the British refused to give it all to Germany. In exchange, Germany had obtained the connecting main portion, which allowed them to create Middle Africa, as they recognized British Persia. In Asia, the Japanese returned Qingdao to the Germans, while Britain handed over French Indochina to them. Post-Civil War, France underwent a major transformation as they embraced Catholic nationalism under Charles Maurras, the leader of Action Francaise. This monarchist, anti-parliamentarianist, counter-revolutionary, anti-communist, anti-Masonic, and anti-Protestant movement gained substantial influence, with Maurras eventually becoming the Prime Minister. The monarchy was eventually reinstated under the Orleanist branch, led by King Philippe VIII, as a constitutional monarchy, and this was something that was highly supported by Emperor Karl of Austria. France still harbored a deep resentment towards Germany and the UK. Revanchist dreams fueled nationalist sentiment. The humiliating legacy of the previous 150 years shaped France's trajectory, with Maras maintaining a significant hold on power, navigating a delicate balance between monarchy and nationalism. In 1923, the Ottoman Empire, a multi-ethnic entity, faced internal strife and discontent with the monarchy. The Young Turk Revolution had failed to address the diverse people's grievances, leading to widespread fatigue with the ruling system. The Hashemites, who had previously led the Arab Revolution against Ottoman rule, persisted in their resistance efforts. Under the rule of the three pashas and a puppet sultan, discrimination and massacres orchestrated by the Ottoman leadership fueled unrest. Kurds, Arabs, Assyrians, and Armenians declared independence, with the Hashemites leading the Arab resistance backed by the British. It was evident to all major powers that the Ottomans were in complete collapse, so the great powers all quickly supported various independent movements to create spheres of control from the dying Ottomans. The three pashas were eventually deposed, creating an opportunity for Greece, Bulgaria, and Italy to all invade Anatolia. However, internal divisions among the invaders resulted in conflict between the Greeks and Bulgarians. The pro-German stance of the Glücksburg family in Greece proved enough as the Kaiser backed them. Germany sought a strong ally in the region and aimed to maintain the Berlin-Baghdad railway through whatever means possible. Simultaneously, Romania invaded Bulgaria from the north, causing Bulgaria to drop out of the war and cede territory to Greece and Romania. The Greeks, with major German support, conquered lands in Anatolia, but the war raged on. In 1926, the French invaded the Palestine region. This move, led by the Catholic nationalists, aimed to secure control of the Holy Land as a major political victory for France. France easily took control of the Levant amidst the chaos, forming an alliance with the Assyrians and the Cilician Armenians and Greeks, who were both Christians and fighting the Kurds, Turks, and Arabs. By 1928, the Ottoman Empire had completely lost authority. The Turks, now led by Ataturk, established Turkey, but the Turkish War of Independence ended in failure as the Germans and French both gave massive aid to their enemies. The new borders of the Middle East were finalized at the Treaty of Toulouse. There were calls for a giant Armenian state, but this was rejected as the Germans and French both feared it would make Armenia too strong. 
Instead, Armenia proper was greatly enlarged and expanded deep into Anatolia, giving the Armenians their greatest size since the Great Armenian Empire in 95 BC. The native Cilician Armenians and Greeks created the Kingdom of Cilicia as a French protectorate. Greece was given land in Anatolia along the Aegean and the Pontus, cementing the Magali idea. Italy was given Lycia, Pisidia, and Pamphyla in southwestern Anatolia. The Assyrians gained the most land, expanding all the way to the Mediterranean, as no major power besides France directly fought in the conflict. Assyria was also a French protectorate. Kurdistan was formed between Armenia, Assyria, and Cilicia. France directly controlled their newly formed Kingdom of Jerusalem, significantly boosting popularity at home. The Arabs were given southern Mesopotamia and Syria, angering them, similar to how Italy was cheated at the end of the Great War. The Greeks formed an alliance with Armenia and Georgia, as all three entered the German sphere of influence. The Arabs formed a constitutional monarchy led by the Hashemites, dividing their newly owned lands into the kingdoms of Hejaz, Syria, and Mesopotamia. In the end, the Turks were left with a mere rum state in central Anatolia, surrounded by enemies. The Austro-Hungarian submerged as the biggest winner, as the collapse, which had only occurred after four years of war on four separate fronts and an American intervention, was averted and never took place here. Despite lingering ethnic issues, the empire, having emerged victorious from the Great War, was far more stable. Emperor Karl, never catching pneumonia as he was not in exile in Madeira, recognized the need for reforms to preserve their empire. It is a misconception that he aimed for an imperial federation encompassing all ethnic groups as that was only a response to Wilson's 14 points, as he had wanted Austria to exit from the war at that point. Proposed reforms, supported by Karl, were influenced by Croatian figures like Nikola Zvonimir Pvijelovic, Ivo Pilar, Stephen Sarkotik, Svetozar Porovicic, Ivo Sold, and Generals Lukas Naric and Michael Mihalovic. Apologies for the pronunciations. They centered around the creation of a third crown in Croatia-Slavonia. Croatia consisted of the Slovenian countries Istria, Rijeka, Croatia-Slavonia, Dalmatia, Bosnia, and Herzegovina. The Austro-Hungarian monarchy was consequently renamed the Austro-Hungarian-Croatian monarchy. The emperor was separately crowned in Austria, Hungary, and Croatia, with joint positions bearing the subtitle Imperial and Royal in German, Hungarian, and Croatian. Count Itzvan Zvia the Hungarian Prime Minister from 1903 to 1905 and from 1913 until 1917 acknowledged the past mistakes towards Croatia near the actual end of World War I, saying, I saw that we have made great mistakes towards Croatia. This signaled the shift in attitudes in real life, so here the Hungarians finally relented and allowed the creation of Croatia. Numerous political, military, and economic reforms took place that gave more independence to Slavs and stabilized the empire without the need for a ludicrous federation. The war acted as a wake-up call for Austria, prompting a rapid modernization of its military to become a premier force of the time. Recognizing military shortcomings, reforms encompassed tanks, air force, and navy. Army Slavic was codified as the official Slavic language for the common army, overcoming language barriers within the military. The modernization extended to factories, railways, and schools, demonstrating a comprehensive effort to revitalize and strengthen the empire. Most importantly, however, the Austrians slowly distanced themselves from the Germans to open themselves to British and American markets, not wanting to end up as Prussian puppets, and they did not join in Middle Europa. The Great Game continued to unfold between Russia and Great Britain, while the Chinese Civil War raged on. Despite the internal strife, the communists would ultimately lose, leading to a fragmented China ruled by warlords. These warlords aligned themselves with different external powers between Russia, Britain, Japan, Germany, and just plain Chinese nationalism. Tibet became a British protectorate, and the external powers all agreed to prevent the unification of China as it aligned with all of their interests. Japan eventually became a superpower and a crucial ally to the British. This alliance strengthened Japan's position and fueled their imperial aspirations. Spain still underwent significant political instability that resulted in a civil war in the 1930s. Without the presence of a major communist nation to provide external support, the factions were democrats, anarchists, separatists, nationalists, and four distinct monarchist factions. These were Alfonsists, Carlists, Hohenzollernists, supported by Germany, and Habsburgsists, supported by Austria. France intervened to support Catalonia and the Balearic Islands. While Britain refrained from direct intervention, it lent support to the democratic faction. 
As a result of the French intervention, Catalonia and the Balearic Islands du jour came under French control in 1934, marking a significant shift in the political landscape of Spain. The French military officially left Middle Europa following their military victories in Spain, and the Germans failed to respond, as the Kaiser was becoming very old and feeble. The civil war raged on, with no side gaining significant ground. Since the ascension of Maras, France had riled up Quebec nationalism in Canada to try and create chaos for the British. In 1939, while on the royal tour, King George VI was assassinated in Montreal. The assassination occurred in an open carriage and marked a pivotal moment in Canadian and global history as the Quebecois broke out into revolt. The assassination became the catalyst for the next global war. The factions were far more complicated here than in World War I. The Great Coalition comprised Great Britain, Japan, Portugal, Spanish Democrats, Turkey, and their Chinese allies. France and Russia, both humiliated by the UK and Germany, joined forces and formed the Imperial Brotherhood. Brazil, Bulgaria, Assyria, Cilicia, Quebec, Spanish Carlists, and their Chinese allies joined as well. The Central Powers, led by Germany, included Italy, Greece, Argentina, Romania, Armenia, Poland, Ukraine, Lithuania, Belarus, the United Baltic Duchy, and Georgia. Similar to the Treaty of London in 1915, Germany, Italy, and Greece signed the secret Treaty of Königsberg, where they drew up a partition of Austria, Anatolia, and the African colonies of Great Britain. Austria, under the leadership of the pacifist Karl, remained neutral from the Great War, prioritizing internal stability and maintaining a policy similar to their stance during the Crimean War. With the other great powers preoccupied, Austria poured more resources into the Habsburg faction in Spain as there was little competition, eliminating and absorbing various other factions. Despite their initial neutrality, Austria had designs to reform a Spanish cadet house, retake northern Italian lands, and annex Poland completely if they were to enter the war. Let me know who would win World War II and how in the comments. The interplay of these factions set the stage for tumultuous World War II, so 5,000 likes for a video on that. All great German World War I scenarios end up with a cool name like Kaiserreich or Kaiser Redux, so what Kaiser-esque name would you give this timeline? Comment below, I'm interested to find out. I was thinking something along the lines of Kaiserzeits, meaning Imperial Age. Hopefully someone can sometime make this into a Hearts Fire and 4 mod. Thanks for sticking around to the end. If you enjoyed the video and want to hope to see the channel grow for more stuff like this, comment, like, and subscribe. Give me any video ideas you have in the comment section below, and if you want to get the map some more, check out my Patreon or become a channel member. Goodbye.